Okay, this is 8F3, 8th grade functions, 3, video 1, linear and nonlinear functions. Here are a few terms to know. I'd like you to copy these down in your journal and please define them. It says a linear function is a graph of a straight line and or an equation that can be put into the function form of y equals mx plus b where the y and x variables both have an exponent of 1 and the slope m is the same for the entire function. Wow, that is a lot. If I'm going back to the main screen and I look at the standard, it says we are going to be interpreting this equation y equals mx plus b as a linear function. So basically what we want to do is we want to focus in on this particular equation Oh, sorry. Let's circle the entire function. Um, so we have y equaling mx plus b. And there are certain rules about that equation when we look at it. Uh, and we will determine whether or not uh, this form is going to be a straight line when we graph it. So it's either going to be a straight line or it is going to be a line that has some type of curvature or bend. So I'm going to start with a few graphs uh, of lines. You're going to notice the red line here. I've even attached the equation that relates to it. If I'm following my definition of a linear function, I see that it is a complete straight line going through my graph. Looking at the equation in function form, function form being y equals mx plus b, do I have all of the um, parts of the definition uh, correct? So looking at my slope of 2 thirds, is that the same throughout my entire picture? Well, if I were to go to my B, my y-intercept, and find another point that's on the line that uh, crosses all of the grid lines, you know, I mean, these are all on the line, but where does it meet the grid lines? And we're going to see if it has the same slope throughout the entire function. That's part of our definition. So it says rise 2 and run 3. All right, so we rise 2 and run 3. OK, so that one worked. Rise 2, run 3, up 2, right 3, up 2. OK, so. Just looking at the picture, um, I'm going to notice that we have this m, the slope, being constant throughout the entire uh, function of the line, you know, the graph of the line here. Uh, it has the same rate of change. Uh, the other part of the definition, if we were to go back, says, so it's a straight line. It can be put into the form, which it is. It's already in the form. And then the next part is our y and x both having an exponent of 1. All right, let's see. So we have the exponent of x. It's invisible, so if there's nothing there, we have a 1. And there's nothing um, attached to the y for an exponent, so it's also invisible, which means it's a 1. So all of the parts of the definition of a linear function do apply to this particular example. So this is why it is a straight line or it is linear. Example two, I have another picture of the line. It's aiming in a different direction. I do notice that it is also straight. It just happens to have a, a negative slope to it. So. Let's find out what the actual name of the equation is. And it's always important to start with the function form and figure out where it crosses the y-axis. So this is going to be our y-intercept, also known as the b. And we are crossing right here at 0. So if you want to just put a placeholder in now, it's at plus 0. 
And now let's figure out what the M is, the slope of the line. So to get to another point where all the grid lines meet, looks like I have a few of them. It also looks like it is constant throughout the function. Let's check it out. We are going to go up two and left one, up two, left one, up two, left one, up two, and left one. And that means as a fraction or a rate of change, M is going to go up two and left one, which means we have an equation of negative two X plus zero. And if I were to simplify that, it's basically Y is equal to negative two X plus nothing. But all right, we have a constant slope, constant rate of change. Our exponents are both to the first power. You don't have to write them in, but they are. And when we graph this line, it is absolutely straight through the grid. So it is linear. Oops, sorry about that. It is linear. <clears throat> Next one. Identify the function as linear or nonlinear. Uh, well, you know, I, I see two lines here. Uh, they kind of come to a, a meeting point uh, known as a vertex. And I will tell you that uh, just by looking at it, this is going to be nonlinear. Even though we have two lines that look straight, it needs to be one continuous line sharing the same slope. Uh, throughout the function. So if I were just to test that, I see that um, to get to this point, I'm going to go up one and right one. So rise one and run one to the right. If I were to find the other point that's on our line, we are also going to rise one, but we are going to the left one. So um, right there, we can tell that we do not have a constant slope or rate of change uh, throughout the entire function. So this is called nonlinear. And as you get into uh, algebra one, you're going to know this equation as y equaling the absolute value of x. And our intercept, our b, was at plus 1. Now, you're not going to have to worry about that um, until next year, but I wanted to tell you what the equation was going to be. It does satisfy exponents being to the first power, um, but it does not satisfy the fact that it has a constant uh, rate of change that's the same, nonlinear. Now, in the standard, it says, can you look at an equation that has variables in it and decide whether or not it is going to be a straight line or it is going to have a line of curvature or some type of bending to it. And uh, one way that we're going to have to figure this out is by putting it into that function form. And we have been working with this in class with the last couple of videos. So this is just uh, you know using your inver inverse operations and solving for y. We're going to have to figure out what this y is going to equal. All right, so let's stabilize that 5y on the left. Uh, let's give us some space here. So we're going to stabilize the 5y. We're going to throw this negative 3x to the right, and it becomes positive 3x. And we have our B on the right, so we're going to keep it on the right. Get rid of the coefficient 5 that's touching the Y. Divide everybody by 5. And we have a simplified function form of 3 fifths X plus 3. And I'm not going to graph it this time. I'm just going to look at the equation and see if it satisfies the rules um, that we have already been made aware of. Uh, we have a constant rate of change of 3 fifths. So m is 3 fifths, 
We're going to be rising three and running to the right five all throughout the line. And more importantly, we notice our exponents. Now, the exponents are really the main player here. The exponents of x are invisible, which means they are to the first power, to the power of 1, which means this is linear. This is going to be a linear function. And there's, you know how to graph them now. We've been doing that. You can create a function table, uh, make up some inputs, will give you your outputs and you will graph it and it will be a straight line. Go check that out on a piece of graph paper. Okay, uh, we already have this equation in function form. We have y equaling m x plus b and something that's kind of jumping out at me right now is this exponent of 2 which we know does not follow our rule or definition for it being a linear function. So when your exponent is anything but 1, this one does work, but the x has an exponent of 2, this is going to give you a nonlinear function. And when you graph it, it's going to uh, have some curvature to it. Again, this is something we're going to be looking more at in Algebra 1, but uh, this year we're practicing on studying these equations. Last one. Same thing. Is this linear or nonlinear, and how did we determine our answer? I have no idea. It looks like a big mess right now. So my job is to put it into function form. which is our good old friend y equals mx plus b. This is also known as slope-intercept form. Just a little note there for you. And let's uh, stabilize the y on the left. Here's my equal sign. I'm actually going to have to take two terms and throw them over to the right. So let's take our x term first. We have 1 fifth x going to the right becomes negative 1 fifth x. And now our b2 will also need to go to the right. And this is the first time this has been happening. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, it's going to be eliminated on the left. And then I have this 0 subtracted by 2 will give us a negative 2. My y has a coefficient of negative 1. And I've taught you two ways. You can divide everybody by that negative 1 or simply change all the signs. Because when you divide by a negative uh, 1, you are just basically changing your term's sign. So negative y becomes positive y. Negative 1 fifth x becomes positive 1 fifth x and negative 2 becomes positive 2. And let's think of our uh, rule for a linear function one last time. Is this going to be straight line when we graph it? I have a constant rate of change of 1 fifth. I have variables called x and y. And both of my variables have an exponent of 1. And this is going to be linear. So why don't you take some time and go graph this equation and bring them to class with you when we meet again. In your journals, I'd like you to define the given terms on page two of the flip chart. Write a few sentences on what you have learned from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to bring those questions to class with you. Also, I'd like you to bring the graphs of um, these three equations that we have just solved in the last uh, three screens. We're going to look at the pictures of them. And I'd also like you to make up a linear and nonlinear example of your own and bring that to class.